you mentioned OG. His date, his player option date is today, today. correct? So yes. we will find out, which we could expect that he is going to opt out, test the waters. And he's sitting pretty right now. Just as you said, with the Philly situation, that could push his number up with the Knicks where Scotto is reporting 35 a lot of people you talk to think it's mid thirty. Some people I've talked to speak uh, say it could be forty. I'm expecting that between thirty five to forty range. I just like I'm gonna go back to Fred Katz, who you have on as well as me, said to me months ago. It was like early in the season or middle of the season, like at, at, at middle of the season after they got OG and Obi, where he's like, OG's reps are gonna look at the Jeremy Grant contract where he got thirty two a year. And be like, that's dude's getting thirty two a year. Like, I never in a million years did I think that he was going to get a dime less than thirty five because there's yeah. not a team out there who would rather have Jeremy Grant. No offense to Jeremy Grant, Jeremy Grant is a really great player. He's if you're looking to win a championship, you'd rather have OG Ananobi on your team than Jeremy Grant. So like, the, the, I always thought it would start at thirty five, yeah. and then you know all you need is 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 one one a hole as they say. So like that that. A hole is here. It's Philly. Like they have the ability to say nothing. You want to hear my hot take? If you're the Pistons, and maybe they're going to look to tank next year. I don't know. They don't seem like they know what they're doing. But if you're the Pistons, why wouldn't you throw a Max at OJ and Obi for the Detroit? What better thing mm. do you have to spend your money on this summer? It's fair. You know? It's fair. They have sixty million dollars. So I'm looking at it like, man, if you could get OG for under forty annually, good job. You know, that's where I'm at at this point. Josh B sends a fight out super chat. So to Josh B he says, does the Scotty Barnes extension hurt us? Does that mean we're going to max OG now? Let's see what the, what was the Barnes number? Did, did you see that? It's a, it is a, it is a max with, it's the, it's the, it's the rookie max, which is 25% of the cap. So I don't know what the number is, but it has in it the language, which all of these rookie maxes now have, which is that if he, Makes All NBA next year, or, or I think it's wins Defensive Player of the Year. I think it's the other one. Um, it gets bumped up to a supermax, so mm. potential to be, you know, two two sixty or whatever the heck it is. Um, I don't know. Again, if like you tell me, if you're, if you're, uh, who who's his mate agent? I know it's Fred talked about this on his pod recently. It's not Sam Rose. It's it's uh, is it Mintz? Mintz. Uh, with, it's, George yeah. Paul George. No, no, uh, uh, OG's agent. Oh, saying, oh no, you know, OG is. Uh, yeah, it's it's not Rose. It's, or is it uh, Brown? It's Brown. I, mean, I don't think it's yeah, Mintz. Okay. It might be Brown. So it's, it's, okay. So yeah. if you're awesome, Brown, and you're going in to talk to your your good buddy, your former boss, Leon Rose, and you're like, man, OG, my client, he thinks he's better than Scotty Barnes. He thinks he's more valuable to a team trying to win a championship right now than Scotty Barnes. He could shoot like Scotty Barnes can't shoot. He could defend like Scotty Barnes can't defend. Um, he looked pretty good out there creating for himself in that that last game before he got hurt when he was the Knicks' best offensive yep. player. They wouldn't have been in in game two if it wasn't for OG Ananobi. Um, like that dude's getting order of a billion dollars, and you're out here offering me. I don't know what he's offering right now, but like again, I don't think it helps. Even though this is probably always expected for Barnes to get the max, you got to pay him, man. It is what it is. Whatever they ask for. There you go, buddy. Unless, unless there is a very clearly defined and certain backup plan, which I just, I do, I want to just say, if you let OG walk for nothing, or you, or you, it's a, it's a sign and trade, and then you get, you know, maybe some picks or something for, you know, let's say. I don't know. I can envision scenarios where maybe it would be a sign of trade, although it's not yeah. likely. You then do one thing by doing that. You take away your, certainly your second apron concerns, but realistically you take away your first apron concerns. The reason why that matters, potentially, just throwing it out there, is it allows you to make some different types of trades, including if there was a Paul George trade in which you something you could be worked out with the Clippers where you kept Randall, but then you'd have to do bogey and Mitch and realistically it would be deuce. Um, like in a, where you could take back more money than you send out. You can't do that once you're over the first apron, you can't yeah. send out more salary in a trade and, um, you know, then you take back 
all of a sudden, if the first apron is a, isn't a concern, you could do that. Could do it, and yeah. you could hard cap yourself because you're not up against the first apron. So, like, again, I'm just I'm trying to think of all the scenarios. Are the Knicks like is somewhere in the corner of their whiteboard this thing where it's like, well, we really don't want to pay OG this, but so like if he leaves, then we could potentially do this. I don't know. I I agree with you. I think OG needs to be kept at all costs. I'd pay him essentially whatever it took to get him. But I, I, there are oh, there's always things happening that we don't maybe think of.